Hello, I'm going to give you an overview of the CoreOS Tectonic Bare Metal installation. We're going to launch first two containers, DNS Mask, DHCP and DNS Server, and Matchbox, a metadata service used to configure machines over iPixie. The launching of these two machines will happen on a laptop, and the laptop will be used also to run two virtual machines that will simulate bare metal machines. These virtual machines are launched via libvirt, and are configured in such a way as to expect configuration over Pixie. So these machines will come up with completely empty disks, no OS installed, and will be waiting on DHCP and Pixie configuration. The step after this is that we need to launch the Tectonic Installer web application. The Tectonic Installer is going to guide you through configuration of the entire Tectonic platform using a graphical application that runs inside of your web browser. This graphical application will eventually, through its configuration, launch Terraform, which will talk to the Mac Matchbox and configure the machines. Now the things that this installer requires are things like the cluster name, the certificate authorities, the SSH keys, etc. are required to do the install. Instead of going through each of those step by step, we're going to save some time here and get the progress file loaded up, which will pre-fill out most of the details for this particular cluster. Again, the details required through these screens are pretty straightforward. It's going to be your certificate authorities, your SSH keys, the MAC addresses of the hosts, the expected DNS names of those hosts, and the overall cluster configuration, all the fundamentals that you would expect. The last thing that we need to do when configuring the cluster is set an initial username and password. And then we're ready to submit this configuration off to Terraform to configure Matchbox. The last step is, is that these nodes, these virtual machines, will make DHCP requests to those two containers we launched at the very beginning and begin to configure themselves. We'll force reboot the two machines since they have no software running on them already, which will force them to do a DHCP, a Pixie, and then configure themselves and install an operating system and eventually the entire Tectonic platform. This is a time elapse. It will take some time for this entire process to happen, around 15 to 30 minutes to download all the required pieces of software and containers. Once complete, you can expect to see a screen like this. This shows that the installation has finished and there's two important pieces of action that you need to take here. First is to download what is called the Assets Bundle. This contains the root certificate authorities and the emergency client certificate that allows you back into the cluster in case any of the configuration goes wrong. These generally will be stored offline and not used for day-to-day -day administration. And the last thing is that we're going to log into the Tectonic console and use that initial username and password that we configured right in the beginning with that, with that uh, initial screen. With the assets downloaded, we can now log into the Tectonic console and check out a couple of the initial deployments that you would expect to see inside of a Kubernetes cluster and see some of the monitoring. So we'll be checking out a deployment and a pod called a kubedns, which is the primary DNS server of Kubernetes. One of the neat things is that Tectonic comes with a full platform of monitoring and administration tools. And so we can see here that the monitoring's already kicked in, see the RAM, CPU, and file system usage of this container running on top of the platform. And kind of as a final check, what we'll do is we'll log into one of the configured nodes, one of those virtual machines that was freshly installed in order to support this cluster. And we can just quickly run uptime command just to show that this is a normal Linux machine. And that's it. Thank you for watching.